Welcome back to another Creative Anger Tech Tutorial. This is going to be a little bit different from any video that I've published yet. This time, I'm going to design something in SketchUp from start to finish with minimal editing. Any editing will be purely to keep pop-ups from Outlook or Chrome hidden if they show confidential information or to keep myself from coughing or sneezing into the microphone. So what am I going to be making? I've been in the planning process of taking a three-month-long road trip across the USA for several months now. I own a Nissan NV200 cargo van that I intend to use during this drive. I want to refit the back of the van to have a low level storage solution that also acts as a bed frame with a full size mattress on top. I'd like to be able to remove items from under this bed through either side doors or the rear door. I need to plan out exactly how this unit will fit into the van and I need to install it around the wheel wells, make sure it's safe and doesn't slide around, has electricity at 12 and 120 volts DC while the vehicle is powered either off or on. And I also need to be sure that I can still comfortably move around the driver and passenger seat so the vehicle can be operated as a normal vehicle. As this vehicle isn't registered as a recreational vehicle or motorhome, the passenger seat must be able to be used while driving. I can't have anyone in the bed in the back while I'm driving around. After our quick intro, we'll get into designing this thing. I'm going to start by laying out the bottom board that will hold the entire thing together. The board will be 47 and a half inches wide, so there's one quarter inch of space on either side between the wheel wells. It's also going to be about six and a quarter feet long. That's the largest size I can fit in the rear of the van. It's about one inch longer than the size of a full size mattress. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out the box. That's 6.25 feet by 47.5 inches. I'm going to use the push-pull tool to bring it up by 18 millimeters, as that's the height of roughly the thickness of a uh, three-quarter inch ply. And then I'm going to go ahead and convert this into its own component. I'm also going to pop it onto its own layer. Now to come up with the design for the walls, I'm going to draw another square or rectangle that goes right on top of the existing bottom shelf. I'm going to use the offset tool to come in by 18 millimeters. This gives me a basis for the walls. I'm going to split it, where necessary, to plan on where I'm going to cut the wood. Excellent. Now I can go ahead and lift each section independently. I know that these sections need to be 12.25 inches tall. I know that because the top surface needs to be at the 13 inch mark as the wheel wells are 12 and a half inches tall. So this way the very top surface is just slightly higher than the wheel, uh, wheel wells and the mattress can set on top. going to hide the bottom board. I'm going to go ahead and make this a component called sidewalls. I'm going to slap that on its own layer as well. When possible, I'm a big fan of putting everything on its own layer. That um, makes it a lot easier to manage in the end because I can go through here and say I don't want to see the sidewalls, I don't want to see the bottom board. I can take measurements more easily, stuff like that. Now one of the things that I want to do for some structural rigidity is I want to find the center point. And make a box that's about 8 inches wide. total. Since we're using three quarter inch ply, same concept applies here. And I'll remove this center line. Now what this is going to do is provide structural support in the center.
one of the major upsides to the center section is this gives us a place to store things such as electrical inverters, batteries, things that are critical for the functionality of the system as far as electrics are concerned. As you might imagine, this is something that I've been tossing around in my head for a little while now as far as um, conceptually how this would work. So what I need to find out is how wide each of these sections is going to be. So that's 483 millimeters. That converts to roughly 19 inches. So that gives us 19 inches on either side to work with, which is excellent. Um... So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and mark where the various central sections are. The whole reason I'm doing this is because I need to make cutouts on these sides that will allow me to take things and Put them in the back. I want to be able to put stuff in here. I, you know, I, I want to use it. So I'm going to come in by one inch, or not one millimeter. I want to come in by, say, 25 millimeters on either side. And I want to be able to come down. I'm going to look up the dimensions of a Pelican 1650 case. That is my most common case. So I'm looking at about 8 inches, 7.58 inches technically. So knowing that, I can come down by, for rigidity's sake, I'll say... ...50 millimeters. So now I'm aware that this is about to become my cutout. I'm going to push pull it in. And that there is the shape, roughly, of what it'll be. Now, before I go ahead and do that, I'm also going to go ahead and add in some, uh, you know, decorative touches, I guess you could say. So I'm adding in a half-inch round. Or, sorry, a three-quarter-inch round. So now I'm going to do the same thing here, 25 millimeters in on either side. And 18 and 18. Come with the pencil tool. And now I've got my openings so I can slide in Pelican cases rather easily. Now again, for me, structural rigidity and support is essential. So if I know that a Pelican, uh, a Pelican 16, or sorry, a 1510, which is again my common case, is 20 inches deep, I'm going to go ahead and take this and measure out uh, 21 inches, and I keep doing millimeters. Of 
or better yet, before I do that, I'm going to remove these measurements and leave that object. So I've got that marked out. And now from the front edge, I'm going to measure in 21 inches, keeping in mind that this is in a different layer. Um, or you know what, I'm going to make it 22 inches. So in here you can fit a Pelican 1610, and in here you can fit a Pelican 1610. So that's two separate Pelican 1610s that you can fit into this structure so far. And again, I'm fully aware that um, segregating this off so heavily does have some downsides in terms of how much stuff that I can fit in the bottom. But it also has upsides in the sense that the entire structure becomes more rigid. And rigidity is pretty important. So on the side here is the next place where I need access. This is very important because this is how I'm going to get things in and out of this unit while the door is open from the side. One of the things that I need to keep in mind is even though the door may be open from the side, that doesn't mean that I'll have access to the entire width of this section here. Um... So what I intend on doing is only using a majority of this section in the wall. So I, th I think the best way to explain this would be I'm going to come in by 5 inches because I definitely want structural integrity. I'm going to come down by 50 millimeters again just like I did earlier. But I'm only going to open this up by 30 inches. Or you know what, I'll make it 36 inches. Then once again, come by 18 millimeters, 18 millimeters, 18 millimeters. Whoops. Oh no. There we go. Now I know I drew the markings on another layer, but it's okay. Because you can still do that. Okay, so we went 5 inches in, 36 inches across, and then we used the same rounded dimensions that we used in the other side. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'll select this layer first, this time. Five inches in, 36 inches across, 50 millimeters down, which is roughly two inches. I'm gonna go 18 millimeters down, 18 across, 18 across. So this is great because at this point I have basically access to everywhere that I would want or need access to. I have the ability to access these storage units. I have the ability to access these storage units. And I've got a trench that goes all the way down the middle. Now one of the things that I really want to do for this little trench... 
Sorry, I've got people messaging me while I'm doing this. Like I said, mostly unedited. I need to find the center. And once again, I'm going to find the center. So I know that's 155 millimeters. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up, let's call it 78 for, for safekeeping. Um, and then I'm going to go, let's say, 40 millimeters that way, 40 that way, 40 that way. 40 that way. And what this is going to be for me or you know what? Do I want to go about doing it this way? Yeah, that's fine. Um, this is going to be a cable pass-through. This is going to be how I get electrical into here effectively. You know, I need to be able to get electrical and all sorts of other things into this whole unit. And then over here, I'm also going to make a cutout where I can put... Oh, look at that. How fancy. I'm also going to put a standard 110 volt duplex outlet here, and I'm also going to put a 12 volt outlet. So at the same time, this is going to be very multi-purpose. Downsides of attempting a real-time thing. People try and reach out. So I'm not sure how ple... I was grabbing the mic, so I'll say this again. I'm not sure how pleased I am with the idea of this. Not entirely sure yet. Now, what I am going to say is down here... I want to find the middle... And something that I want to be able to do is drill in a grid of holes that allow for airflow. So let's say I start up by 12 millimeters and I make it 75 millimeters. And this here will become a grid. So if that's 75... So let's say... Let's do some math here. Excellent. And now, let's see here, how wide is this? 150? Um, I'll do the same thing. And I'm going to delete the bottom row so I don't get too close to the bottom. I don't want to risk destroying the wood. at each intersection I'm going to drill a hole my watch is reminding me to stand now I'm aware that there are methods of duplication in SketchUp but what I found is sometimes it's just easier to do it the hard way because with the the amount of time you'll end up spending messing around with the replication settings on something as small as this this just ends up being easier sometimes especially when you're coming up with your dimensions on the fly you really have no idea what it is you're going to be making you know, I have a grand scheme of ideas in my head, but I, I really, I'm not 100% sure 
how this is going to end up by the time we're done. At this point, I'm going to get rid of the grid. And uh, this is where I'm going to hate my life for just a little while. This is something I haven't tried before. Can I do multiples at a time? Nope. Why does it hate me? <sighs> There's always that one troubled child. So I will also say that I do run into a fair bit of what appears to be Google's, or not Google, it's not Google anymore, but like little SketchUp glitches when I'm trying to do push-pull. It, it does happen rather regularly. I apologize about my voice. I had the flu a few weeks back and my voice is just not fully returned to normal. Some days are better than others. To anyone here who's a SketchUp expert, if you can think of a better way to push-pull this many segments that doesn't involve uh, wanting to smash your face into a wall, I am all ears. Because I am halfway done. And all of this is for airflow. Back to doing the things I don't want to do. You might think this is a little bit ridiculous, a little bit of overkill to draw ahead of time. But what it does is it gives me a realistic knowledge of what sort of tools and supplies I'm going to be looking forward to. You know, it helps having the grand overall plan fully assembled ahead of time is very important. <coughs> Even down to the little details like this, it, it genuinely is important. All right. There we go. And this is important because each one of these holes is a quarter inch hole. So knowing how and where they need to be placed is very important to make sure that it's done right the first time. You don't want to you don't want to put so many holes into the structure that you end up affecting its integrity. Now what I need to do is put a cutout for let's see here. What I need to do is put a cutout, two different cutouts, one for 110 volt outlets and another one for a standard uh, 12 volt car outlet. All right, so I'm on Amazon. I'm looking up some products. Uh, let's see here. I'll show this to you real quick. Um, this is the product that I'm currently looking at. It is 28.6 millimeters in diameter, so I'll make it uh, uh, two 30 millimeter holes. So I can have two of these things in the back. So again, open up, find the middle point. If I know they're 30 millimeters each, I want 30 millimeters between them. So I'll put 15 millimeters there. 15 there, or you know what? From here, I'll just do 
45 millimeters, 45 millimeters. I want from the top of here, I want it to be at least 60 millimeters. So that way there's a bit of clearance. Or you know what, I'll do 45 again. So now I know I can make a hole there that's 15 millimeters. Hole there that's 15 millimeters. Push pull. Push pull. The same company apparently has a um, device that's of the exact same form factor. That's two USB ports. So I'm going to go ahead and push pull a third hole. You know, why not? Why not? Give myself the ability to have uh, a 12 volt USB and a 12 volt. That gives me ultimate flexibility in what plugs in in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, delete the unnecessary lines. I'm going to find the top of here. And then I'm going to come up by say 75 millimeters and I'm gonna call this the center point for the electrical outlets that I want to install now the electrical outlets have to be done properly so I'm gonna look up a two gang electrical box now what I want are the dimensions that I could make a hole from I know the box is four inches by four inches so for the moment, I'm just going to go with that. I can tweak the dimensions a bit later on. Okay, so now what I will have is uh, a 12 volt, a USB, a 12 volt, and a two gang box with four electrical outlets on it. And for me, that, that's perfect. That's everything that I need out of this system. However, I'm going to once again close this back up in the back. I don't like the way this was put together. So once again, I'm going to find the middle point. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for uh, probably a 120 millimeter fan. Yeah, I could fit a 120 millimeter fan in there. So what I've done is I've drawn out the dimensions of a standard 120 millimeter fan where the holes are on 105 millimeter spacing and this is the opening for the airflow and this is going to be a fan that is just designed to pull air through the entire center column here. And the whole reason behind that is in the end I intend on placing some batteries in here as well as an inverter. And the batteries that I'm going to put in here will be uh, 12 volt batteries that will not power the inverter, but they're going to power accessories through the rest of the van um, while the van is turned off. And I plan on doing it in a way where I'm going to get at least 24 hours of usage out of the lights in the van, out of the cooling fans in the van. I'm going to run the math to make sure that everything's within spec to give me about 24 hours worth of use. Um, but as a whole, this is going to end up being the design. And I think this is a very reasonable design. Now the last thing that I need to do is come through here.
so that's a uh, let's call it a hundred and forty. So let's say seventy millimeters up. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a twelve and a half millimeter hole, so a twenty five millimeter hole, and this can be used for a cable gland that will hold. Oh no, not what I wanted to do. This will leave space for a cable gland that'll hold the main power cord that'll tie this into the vehicle. Um, that way it can be considered removable. Or at the same time, a 25 millimeter hole uh, is capable of holding like a Nutric PowerCon connector. So if I wanted to, I can come up with a, a, a quick disconnect system. Even if it's using not a PowerCon, but like a Nutric NL2 or an NL4 connector, so I can connect and disconnect the 12 volts from the vehicle, provided I'm within the current limitations. So now that we have this design, we need to go ahead and design what will hold the uh, mattress on top. That is the next step. So I'm going to look up full-size mattress dimensions. And a full size is 54 by 75 inches. So 54 wide is the goal. Right now we are sitting at 47 and a half. So if we know we're at 47 and a half, then we know we need to get six and a half inches out of effectively nowhere. So that gives us three and a quarter inches on either side. Now what I'd like to also be able to do is have a little bit of a rail to hold the mattress itself into place. And I'd like to use standard one by two to do that. So that being said, if I'm gonna use one by two, if I'm not mistaken, that means it's actually three quarter. Yeah, that's three quarter by one and a half in reality. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the rectangle tool. I'm going to build the top, bring it up by 18 millimeters. So I know this is 47 and a half. So if I have to add six and a half inches to the width, I'm going to go ahead and divide that by two, which leaves three and a quarter inches on either side. Now, on top of that, I'm going to add uh, another one and a half inches. So that's 1905. So front to back is the exact size necessary. So what I want to do is on this back half is I want to add another three quarter of an inch. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in by 18 millimeters and I come in by 18 millimeters come in by 18 millimeters. I'm going to hide all of the other layers to remove everything. Before I do that, this is going to drive me nuts. So now I'm going to take this entire thing call it top board re-enable everything else
Now, the whole reason I'm separating these boards of wood where I am is for aesthetics. That's the only reason. My entire deciding there, my entire deciding factor is definitely purely aesthetics. Pretty sure I just spelled mattress wrong. Oh well. So now the last thing that I need to do is re-enable the top board, find the halfway point, and split it into two. And the reason I have to do that is because unfortunately one board of wood is not big enough. Excellent. So the final part that I have to do here, before I can call this project completely done, is I need to disable the top. course, I didn't manipulate the appropriate thing. That does happen from time to time. Okay. Excellent. So I'll get rid of top board again. Delete that. Bring top board back. Good. So one of the things that I have to consider is how I'm going to be able to uh, remove this top board if necessary for maintenance purposes. That is actually a rather important thing to consider. Um, there are a couple different avenues that I'm looking at at the moment, or considering, I should say. Um, one of them involves basically making an access hatch that can be lifted out, because the only thing I really need to access is the electronic components in the middle. So what I'm thinking about doing is let's re-enable everything again. Let's remove the top board. So that's 167.2 millimeters. So 167.2 divided by 2 gives us 83.6. So if I come here and I go 83.6 83.6 or you know what even better I'll just do 82 and 82 that way there's a little bit of uh, wiggle room and this doesn't even need to be screwed in place this could literally just sit on top use this to find the center Go back 18 inches, go back 18 inches, make sure we're modifying the appropriate layer here. Now you'll see that fits. So what I need to do now is mark off so it's 962 millimeters in. Easy enough. I'll delete You know what, I'll leave those guides. I'm going to take the tie port, top board and the mattress guides, shut them off. So 
So on this layer, I'll now come back eighteen inches and eighteen inches. So now we know where the cutout is located. So what I'll do is I'll make a four inch strip here and a four inch strip here. I'm going to go down 1.5 inches. And now what I have is a cutout where I can, off of one of the piece, scrap pieces of wood, I have a little duct where I'm capable of setting in a piece of wood safely. This isn't exactly a major load-bearing area. We have enough surface area to carry the weight of everything else. And uh, we now have an access hatch to get to where the batteries themselves will be. This is what I'll turn into the battery compartment here. The inverter and electrics can go over here or over here, but uh, this, this gives us our ability to add and remove batteries as necessary. Perfect. So the whole thing is now properly able to be built without any issue. For the sake of being thorough, I am going to go ahead and build myself a little trap door. It's going to drive me nuts if I don't. Or in this case, I need to do 18 millimeters. And then I'm going to push in every side by 2 millimeter. And now you can see how the trap door will seal up. Now it is 3 feet long. And I might find that after putting weight on it, I do need to support it a little bit better in the center. But as a whole, this system will allow for adequate airflow and ventilation of any of the electronics and components that are stored inside of here that give me electricity at both 12 and 120 volts. It gives me a uh, standard 12 volt, standard 12 volt, and a standard uh, dual socket 5 volt USB for electrical outlets and ventilation openings. This is designed so it'll hold a Pelican 1510 on either side and this can actually hold two Pelican 1510s on either side and I only have four of them so this works perfectly for me. This gives me storage of stuff like uh, for instance tripods, filming on tripods, film gear on one side, camera gear, camera gear and then luggage. So it, this is this is a very ideal solution to um, a basic problem that I have. You know, this this road trip program that I want to do is a road trip that's designed for me to go around the country and meet with other creators, uh, not necessarily YouTubers, but creator uh, creators that that make things and invent things and do cool stuff just like this. If you thought this video was cool or it helped you in any way, click that thumbs up button. If it didn't, let me know. Tell me what I can do better. Write it in the comments below. You want to see more? Click subscribe. As always, have a fantastic day, and see ya.